<laughs> uh, I think that was one of the great things about the trip actually is just getting to know one another but Manu itself was overwhelming I found in the first week especially I just it's there's so much going on there's just I remember at one point we were on a road and we stopped to look at something on the ground and then all of a sudden the guy's pointing up in the air and we're supposed to be looking up at you know some vulture or something and then then there was this snake and then there was this, this other thing going on this other bird and it's just I didn't know where to look <laughs> it was just um, it was incredible the variety of wildlife in, in, in a pristine setting was astounding and um, I'll never forget it that to me made a huge impact, just, just seeing that much wildlife in one place. The variety of life on, on every species, you know, like even the trees, even the things that didn't move, how many you know, different types of tree there is. It's, that's incredible, um, the variety for me was intense. And, and how, just how intense it was. Even the first morning, you know, before breakfast we'd seen, what, 23 birds. Yeah. So at that point I knew we were we were gonna see a lot of birds. <laughs> <laughs> I love the uh, like the spontaneity of the moment. It's just you couldn't plan. You knew you were going on a walk and you had all your stuff with you and our guide was phenomenal and he just really kept us in that moment of just be open to whatever presents itself. And um, so totally out of the structure of normal life and into the moment and just staying in the moment mm -hmm. and just watching what appears and just being open to that, right? right? That was huge for me. I love the group energy that we all created together on this trip. Or like the, the defining moment of it was when the tapir is swimming across the river. <laughs> and then you hear our guy, Rive, aw, effing lucky guys. <laughs> I see only certain things. And the jungle, what the jungle's telling me is to be open to everything around me. And being in the moment and feeling into others and feeling into the space and just feeling into myself and getting grounded in the present and quiet in me in order to see more that, you know, square meter of jungle and like everything that's actually there. Yet if you, you could just walk right past it and not see 20 different things. I mean, our guide, Reve, could find a spider this big from a hundred <laughs> meters away. At night. <laughs> At, At night, night, with just a flashlight. With a zoom of a flashlight like that, Where, you know? Reve was amazing. Uh, how much yeah. he could spot and how mm -hmm. much he could see. Yeah, because he, he connected all his senses to his experience. What he does is he, he, he connects his ear to it to his nose, to his eyes, it was like he just connects all of his senses mm -hmm. to his environment. And so his present, his awareness and, and being able to, to spot things and then it was incredible. And then to identify them yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> incredible. I remember that he said that very few people can put their ears and their eyesight together and have them work as one. Also, for me, Manu, like, we were talking about how comfortable we are walking through a jungle that's full of things that can kill you. I think for me this is one of the lessons that I got was not only was the, there an abundance of life there and every animal's fighting for its own survival but there's this balance. Everything is working in harmony. Mm -hmm. All right. One of my other favorite experiences about that is when you told me that you wanted to see an owl like after the first week. I'm thinking, crap. You, owls are very hard to see. And then a week later, we're walking at noon in the middle of the day, and... I was leading. Pretty much the only time I was leading. And, yeah, the owl just flew straight past me. That, that would be my biggest learning. And that happens with my kids, it happens with my work, it happens with my wife. Just instead of you know being focused towards a task or a checklist, it's just to be open to what appears, even within those confinements of everyday life. There's still so much more that's happening that I think 
in some way or another, I've socialized or trained myself to just close that, just focus on one thing. But I can still be expanded and open to everything else at the same time. Look it around and then and then be like, oh well, oh what's here? And, you know, and you focus in on a couple square inches of jungle and you're like, oh my god. Wow, look at the way that leaf is growing. Cool, man. You know, and it's all right there. We would be with, there would be other tour groups with us. We'd be at parrot clay, like waiting for all these parrots to show up and to start eating the clay. And we'd wait for like an hour, hour and a half. And all the other tour groups, they were on fixed time, so they left. And right as soon as those other groups left, is when the parrots would show up. You know, like some networking event or some other event. And you're like, nothing's happening here. You know, I'm not getting what I wanted. You know, there's no clients here. We like to go places. We like to get somewhere. We want to Drive. get from here to there. In the jungle, everything is already all around you. So it doesn't matter where you go. And you put in some effort to get to the optimal place at the right time. And it is, it's the difference between our guide knowing that it's between you know, six, six and seven a.m. in the morning that the jaguars are out on the beach at this time of the year, and the other guy not knowing that. And going at 10 o'clock in the morning. And going at 10 in the morning. Not seeing anything. It's like you need those things, but you need to put those in place, and that's what you put in place, right? It, it, my big aha moment was actually uh, talking with Bruce one, one day, and realized that the difference is when I'm clear on what it is I'm doing, when I'm clear on my purpose, when I'm clear on me, and I'm just being me, and I can show up fully. You know, like, kind of like the jaguar, if the jaguar's not clear that, okay, I'm going out to hunt, <laughs> if it's just kind of walking through the forest, it's not going to catch anything. <laughs> but they're clear, the animals are clear. And so for me, it was just, oh, that was a big piece, of just getting clear on what it is I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And then when I'm in that space, I'm absolutely solid. If you've got a jaguar pretending to be a monkey, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna die. It's gonna die. You got a, a jaguar knows it's a jaguar, and it's like, and, it, and it's proud to be a jaguar. It's the only thing it can do. In my past, I've always been looking outside for examples of who I am. For examples of okay, that's what I should be doing. Someone who's running a business, you know, um, selling shoes or whatever, and it's like, wow, and he's comfortable in that business. Like, wow, maybe I should be a shoe salesman. You know, because because it's, it's working really well for him. So always looking for the outside for other examples, essentially other examples of who I am, essentially, instead of instead of looking at who I am. That comes down to, is it okay to be me? What my question going into Manu was, what is what is life like? And so everything that we learn in the jungle directly translates. You know, drag and drop. Um. I loved all. I loved the jokes. I loved. Uh, I loved how we supported each other. I, I loved the camaraderie. Manu, for me, is a place that is so different than anywhere else. It's, it seemed. I felt like I was on a different planet. Yeah. I was reminded many times during our trip of the movie Avatar. Right. <laughs> at which point? <laughs> at which point these blue Rachel? people waking up at the uh, the, the waking up at the <laughs> our hands all blue, our faces blue. What was shown in that movie, what was popularized in the movie Avatar, is actually happening here now in the jungle, in places like Manu, where oil companies are actively exploring, exploiting that area for for the oil reserves there. Right. and the impact that'll have. And we got to see the impact because just south of Manu, we saw slash and burn, farm, you know, slash agriculture. And burn, we saw the gold mining and the and gold mining, mercury in the river. Mercury in the river and everything else that's going on and the impact that we as humans have on nature and on our environment. And it's, it's really our duty to take care not only of ourselves but our environment because we have such a huge impact.